Hi friends, good evening. So I see a lot of folks are out here. Can everyone hear me? So uh, welcome to this class on number systems. Yeah, good evening. Hi, good evening Satyam. Hi Manoj, hi Prabhakar. Hi Renu, hi Binita. Good evening everyone. So this is a really important topic in uh, mathematics, uh, the number systems, and we'll be talking about rational and uh, irrational numbers. So we'll be talking about the real numbers, which can be divided as rational and irrational. And this class is really important for class nine, 10, even for class seven and eight. So if you're in from class seven to 10, this is a really important topic for you to understand. And I'm going to make the concepts really clear and easy for you. So I'm sure you'll be a master of number system after watching this class. Hi, good evening. So I can see a lot of folks are uh, out here. Hi, Ayush. Hi, Anuj. Hi, Srinivas. Good evening, everyone. So welcome to this class on number system. So this is our maths class. Uh, and uh, guys, if you haven't checked out the website, manochaacademy.com, do check it out. So we have these physics class nine and class 10 full courses. And soon we'll be launching the chemistry and math courses also on the website. So if you guys haven't checked out these courses, do check it out. We have interactive videos, quizzes and questions for you to practice. So these courses will really help you in your preparation. And we have big discounts going on on these courses. All right. So guys, let's get started with this uh, amazing uh, maths topic on number systems. And uh, we see numbers in our everyday life, right? So for example, when you go uh, to the vegetable shop, let's say you want to get a dozen apples. So let's say you want to buy 12 apples, right? So that's the number 12. Or let's say if you're eating this pizza. So if you're eating one slice of this pizza, we can say you have had one sixth of the pizza, right? So you can see there's six slices. And if you have eaten one, you've had one sixth. So that's a fraction number, right? And let's say you eat three pieces in this chocolate bar. So this one, this one, and this one, right? So how many uh, chocolates have you eaten? Uh, how much uh, chocolate have you eaten here? We can see that there are eight pieces. So you've eaten three by eight, right? So you've eaten three by eight of the chocolate. So that's a fraction. And let's say this is your piggy bank here. Okay. And let's say you've saved 21.50 rupees in your piggy bank. So that's a decimal number, right? 21.5. And guys, can you tell me what is this big number that you see here? 3.141592652 and so on. So guys, can you recognize the number in this picture here? So I'm talking about this picture. So what number is this? Very good. I see a lot of you are giving the answer. It's the value of pi. Excellent. So this number is also a very important number in maths. You've seen it. The it's the value of pi. So we see numbers all the time in our everyday life. Excellent. A lot of you have got the number pi. And these numbers are uh, really important for us. And as you can see, there are different types of numbers. So we have like uh, you went to buy apples and you wanted to buy 12 apples. That's an integer number. Then you have 1 by 6, 3 by 8, fraction. Then you have a decimal number. Then you have numbers like pi. Since we have so many different types of numbers, we are going to organize the numbers in this class, right? And we're going to talk about the different type of numbers. Okay, guys. So let's see. So let's start with the topic. So you must have heard of this term. It's called real numbers, right? So we're going to talk about what are real numbers. Real numbers are those numbers that can be represented on a number line. So let's start with an example. So I'm sure you know that these counting numbers like one, two, three, four, and so on. These can be represented on the number line. So can you tell me what are these numbers? One, two, three, four, these counting numbers known as? So guys, what are the numbers that I've represented here on the number line known as? One, two, three, four, and so on, right? Someone says integers, good. You're saying real numbers, yes natural numbers excellent so uh, actually all your answers are correct right but first let's uh, 
say that these numbers are called natural numbers. Let's start with the simple case. So as you can see, the numbers I've marked here are called natural numbers. So which are the numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, right? Now if we add the number 0 here, right? Then what is this set known as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 guys, what is it called? So you must be knowing this. These are called whole numbers, right? So once you add the 0, so once you have 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on, these are called whole numbers. Excellent. I see a lot of you have uh, written whole numbers here. Superb, right? And now you can, so we have the natural numbers here. And if you add 0 together, these guys are called whole numbers. And we can also add these negative numbers here like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and so on, right, on this number line. So I'm adding these numbers on the number line. So what is this whole set known as? Excellent. I see you guys are amazing. Uh, I see the an correct answer there in the chat. So these are called integers, right? So when we talk about these negative uh, numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, so all of these together, these are known as integers right so this whole set here that we've shown on the uh, number line is called integers and whole numbers is the subset of the numbers from 0 1 2 3 4 and natural numbers you know are 1 2 3 4 and so on okay so is this clear that's great and now let's go ahead and let me ask you a question here so let's talk about zero is a very important number right and so can you tell me the first question is, is 0 a positive integer, a negative integer, or is it neither positive nor negative? So what do you guys think from this uh, for the first question here? So I'm talking about this first question on top. Is 0 a positive integer, a negative integer, or is it the option C, neither positive nor negative? So I see a lot of you are uh, saying it's the option C. Excellent. That's the correct answer here. 0 is neither positive nor negative okay guys so zero is not considered either a positive number nor is it a negative number excellent now let's take a look at the second question so the second question here is is zero an odd integer an even integer or is it neither odd nor even so what do you think here so guys what do you think is the answer here so i see a lot of c's over here somebody saying b Okay, so you know the uh, odd integers are, so if you look at this number line, the odd integers are 1, 3, 5 and so on, right? Uh, and the even integers, all of you know, they are uh, 2, 4 and 6. But is 0 an even integer or not? The answer is 0 is normally considered an even integer. Okay, guys, so 0 is considered. So B is the correct answer. That's very good. Uh, 0 is considered an even integer. Okay, but it's neither positive nor negative. Excellent. So now let's go back to our number line. And guys, can you tell me, are there any numbers between 0 and 1? So what do you think here? So the question is, can we have any numbers here between 0 and 1? What do you think? So do numbers between 0 and 1 exist? Very good. I'm seeing a lot of you are saying yes and you're saying these are called rational numbers. Excellent. So let's uh, take an example. So let's say uh, between 0 and 1, you can definitely have this number half, right? So if you plot it exactly between 0 and 1, it's going to be the number half. Similarly, if we consider numbers between 1 and 2, I can divide it into 10 parts and if I mark the seventh part as 1.7. So right? So there exist numbers between these uh, natural numbers, right? These are the decim decimal numbers or you can see the fractions here, right? So very good. So uh, as you can see, there definitely exist numbers on the number line between the uh, natural numbers or between the integers here, right? So for example, even between minus 2 and minus 3, we can have minus 2.5, correct? Okay, so let's take a look. What are these guys called? 
so we uh, so there's this term used they are known as rational numbers right so what is the meaning of rational number so rational numbers means they can be expressed as a fraction here so can you see this fraction here so rational numbers can be expressed as a fraction as a p by q form right and note that the denominator q should not be equal to zero because why you know that in maths division by zero is uh, not defined right it's undefined so rational numbers are basically fractions and we write it as the form p by q and the important thing is p and q are integers here okay so let's consider some simple examples here so for example can you see 7 by 4 here so if you look at this example 7 by 4 can you see it's of the form p by q right so if i write here p by q can you see the form so p is 7 q is 4 so 7 by 4 is a rational number similarly if you look at the next example 1 by 8 right and the next example 4 by 3 so can you see that so guys let's calculate these numbers so 7 by 4 1 by 8 these are expressed as fractions and let's express them in the decimal form right so i'm going to pull up the calculator here for you right so actually you should practice uh, division yourself but uh, let's take a look with the help of the calculator also uh, out here so 7 divided by 4 right the first number so that's 1.75 let's go ahead and write that down here so this number is 1.75 let's check out the next number here it's 1 by 8 so 1 divided by 8 right as you can see it's 0 0.125 okay and let's take a look at what is the last number here so we have 4 by 3 so 4 divided by 3 can you see in the calculator it's 1.333 and it just goes on so I'm going to write that here so 1.33333 and it just continues okay so note what we've done here we started with we said rational numbers can be expressed as fractions of the form p by q right where p and q are integers and here i have some examples for you so we've expressed these fractions as decimals right so now can you see so what is the pattern that you noticed here right so can you see that in the first number 1.75 and the second number can you see that the decimal terminates right so take a careful look here so these are known as terminating decimals terminating numbers right because can you see that the decimal is terminating and if you look here it's basically continuing on and on so 1.33333 it never stops right because as we saw here in the calculator of course the calculator has a limit you can't see the digits beyond the three but can you see it's going on repeating 1.333 so this is known as non-terminating and it's also called recurring non-terminating and recurring right because can you see the number three is repeating here very good i see a lot of you have written non-terminating and repeating or non-terminating and recurring excellent right and this is usually deno denoted in maths as we say because the digit 3 is repeating so we do 1.3 and we put a bar on top right or we can say 1.3 dot to represent that the decimal 3 is repeating excellent right so look here guys this is a very important so you really need to understand these terms and concepts so in rational numbers you can express it as uh, terminating you can have in rational numbers we can have terminating decimal numbers so can you see these so these are terminating decimals or you can have non-terminating and recurring clear excellent so now let me ask you a couple of questions so why don't you go ahead and try the first question here is 3 a rational number yes or no what do you think so the first question is is 3 a rational number 
So I see Ayush says yes, Gautam Devnath says yes, right? Yes, no, there are some no's here. So what do you think? Is 3 a rational number or not? So what was our definition of a rational number? It should be of the P by Q form. Okay. So why is 3 a, a rational number? So good, I see some of you have written the explanation also. So if you take the number 3, we can write it as 3 by 1 right so here the denominator is one and can guys can you see that p by q form here so three by one so the answer is yes three is a rational number excellent very good now can you try the next question is 2.5 a rational number or not what do you think so let's try the second question here guys so i see yes yes no right so is 2.5 a rational number so again, we'll do the same thing. So if you take 2.5, it's in a decimal form and uh, rational numbers are P by Q, right? Because you can always convert decimal to fraction, fraction to decimal, right? So uh, for these simple uh, things, so for 2.5, what can we write? So we want to try to get it to a fractional form. Is that possible or not? So we've got uh, uh, 2.5. So 2.5 is going to be 25 by 10. And you can simplify that, right? So it's going to be 5 by 2 right okay so it's going to be 5 by 2 and can you see it's clearly the p by q form 5 by 2 so this is definitely a rational number so the answer here also is going to be yes excellent so 25 by 10 or you can uh, i'm seeing a lot of people are writing 25 by 10 that's also right and you can further simplify it and cancel the common factor and it's going to be 5 by 2 super so now let's take a look at these. Uh, so this is a very important and confusing thing, right? So we'll take a look at some more examples because we talked about this concept of terminating means the decimal numbers stop after a point like this. Can you see or non terminating and recurring means they are going on endlessly. So rational numbers are of these two types. So let's take a look at some more examples here. So again, I'm going to pull up our calculator and let's try this number one divided by seven. Right, so you can calculate it yourself. For now, we'll just use this. So, what do we get here? Right, so can you see we are getting this thing uh, uh, 0 0.14218, so uh, 285714, right. and so on so guys can you see that so i'll just move this a bit to the side so you, you can compare this now so if you look at one by seven can you see and what is the so it is definitely it's not uh, terminating right so one by seven you can see it is continuing on and on and can you see the repeating pattern so what is the repeating pattern here so one four two eight five seven one four two eight five seven guys can you see that so we can write this of this form 0 0.142857 where this part is repeating or recurring so it's clearly a non-terminating recurring decimal clear so this one is clearly a it is a non-terminating recurring decimal right so it's a non-terminating recurring number now let's take a look at 19 by 50 okay so again to we want to decide is it terminating or uh, recurring so again we'll uh, divide and check right so 19 by uh, 50 sorry not by 5 so 19 by 50 is 0 0.38 okay and here can you see that it is a terminating decimal number so here we are doing all these divisions and uh, finding it out but I'm going to show you a simple trick where you actually don't have to do the division. So I'm coming, uh, we're going to come to that and let's do the last number 43 by 150 guys. So we are using the calculator here and can you see what do we get here guys? So we, we are getting 0 0.28 uh, and then it continues, right? So 0 0.2866 and this thing goes on, right? Can you see that? And it's continuing. So we can express this of the form 0 0.2866. 286 where the 6 is repeating okay so and this is uh, what is this going to be it's basically 
uh, it's non terminating recurring so non terminating and recurring and sometimes we simply say recurring because we know it's repeating so it's not uh, terminating right so uh, can you see here guys that uh, this one uh, these two were non terminating and recurring numbers and this one was a terminating number right can you see that so there's one important trick here so one way is you can actually do the division so uh, in the uh, exam and test you can't use a calculator so you'll have to sit and divide but there's a very nice trick where you can actually find it without calculating so do you guys know what it's uh, the trick the trick is that you need to look at the denominator okay so we need to look at the denominator of the fraction and if the denominator has factors of 2 and 5 only so if it has factors of 2 and 5 only then it is a terminating decimal number so then it is terminating then it's a terminating uh, decimal number otherwise it's going to be a recurring or a non-terminating recurring decimal number clear so see guys i've shown you the example of a calculator so you can practically try these also using your calculator and understand it to get a real feel of it but now if we apply this rule let's see then you don't have to calculate okay so uh, what is the application of the rule here so if you look at the first uh, first fraction here one by seven can you see that seven does not have factors of two and five right so it's the number seven so therefore it is not going to be terminating and that's what we found using the calculator now if you look at 50 50 we can break it down as 2 into 5 into 5 right so 25 into 2 is 50 so we've broken down and can you see that 50 has factors of 2 and 5 only can you see that guys so therefore it's basically a terminating decimal number as we marked here can you see we marked it as a terminating decimal number because it has factors of 2 and 5 only and now if you look at the last example 43 by 150 so let's break that down so what are going to be the factors here so it's basically 3 into 50 right so it's going to be uh, the factors of this are going to be 2 into 3 into 5 into 5 right okay and now can you see that we have factors of 2 and 5 but it's not 2 and 5 only because we have the number 3 in there so therefore it is non-terminating and recurring okay so guys is this concept clear that you actually don't have to do the division you can use this simple rule that if denominator has factors of 2 and 5 only then you can surely say it's a terminating decimal number otherwise it's a non-terminating or recurring right so here we talked about rational numbers we discuss rational numbers of the form uh, which are of the form p by q and we divided them into terminating and non-terminating or recurring decimal numbers now let's go ahead and talk about another interesting set of numbers called irrational numbers so what is the definition of irrational numbers irrational numbers are those numbers which are not rational okay so the numbers which are not rational for example so we have some examples here root 2 so let's go ahead and take uh, root 2 so if you do that in the calculator here so can you see what do we have here 1.41 so 1.4142 and let's write some more uh, digits uh, 1356 right okay guys so can you see the square root of 2 we have here similarly and it continues right so there are more digits uh, there and then we have uh, square root of 3 so let's write that down here so 1.73205 and it goes on okay now one important thing to note here is these are also non-terminating but are they recurring no excellent i see a lot of you have written they're non-terminating and non-recurring because you cannot find a repeating pattern here previously remember we had found a repeating pattern in these numbers and that's how we had marked it with that bar and dot but in these numbers like square root of 2 square root of 3 or if you try cube root of 10 so guys do you know how to find cube root of 10 
So you're basically cube root of 10 is uh, 10 to the power 1 by 3, right? So in a calculator, you're going to do 10 to the power 1 by 3. Okay, and that's going to be the cube root of 10. So it's 2.15443 we have here. 3, 4, 6, right? And it goes on. Okay, so can you see that? The cube root of 10, again, there is no repeating pattern here. Okay, so these are basically, so the irrational numbers, very important to note here, these are uh, non-terminating. So they're non-terminating and non-recurring. Okay, non-recurring means they don't repeat. So please remember this important point that irrational numbers, they have to be non-terminating means they never end. So it can go on and on and on and they're non-recurring. Okay. And uh, uh, you may think that, oh, these cal uh, we, how do we know whether there's a repeating pattern or not? Actually, they've used supercomputers and calculated these numbers till millions of decimal places. And they've verified that these numbers root two, root three, uh, cube root of 10, pi, all these kind of numbers, there is no repeating pattern. Okay, so uh, the scientists have used computers and calculated it and checked that they are not finding any repeating pattern. So therefore, they're definitely non recurring and non terminating. Okay, uh, and pi also. Uh, so please remember pi. Uh, normally, you guys might be thinking we write pi as 22 by 7, right? So my question is uh, 22 by 7. Is that a rational? So then why do we say pi is irrational? So do you guys know here? Right. So if we take pi as 22 by 7, uh, is it a rational number? But uh, normally we've studied in maths, it's irrational number. So what is the reason why 22 by uh, 7 is not correct here? Because what's wrong about this is 22 by 7 is just an approximation. OK, so that's only the approximate value of pi. So we are not going to consider that because if you look at that, then it looks like a p by q form. So it will be a rational number. So that's our approximate value. We won't take that. So you know that pi has the value and you can check in the calculator also 3.14159, you know, it just goes on and on. So 3.14159. Okay, so let me just erase this uh, here. And let's write pi again. So pi is basically so this is not the correct value pi is three point it's only the approximate value right and again pi is non terminating and non recurring so the important thing guys the irrational number cannot cannot be expressed in a p by q form okay so please remember these important concepts absorb them then you'll find this chapter really easy because the definitions are very important excellent so now i have some questions for you so from the numbers given below can you tell me which numbers here are irrational? Okay. And one point I forgot to mention, these kind of numbers like uh, root two, uh, root three. So these are known as thirds. Okay. The, uh, the square root form, the cube root form. So these forms are irrational numbers, right? They are good examples of irrational numbers. So now here's my question. So from the numbers given below, can you tell me which numbers are irrational? Okay, I see a lot of answers here. Good. So a lot of you are saying pi by 2 is the only irrational number here. Okay, somebody saying cube root of 8, uh, pi by 2. Excellent. I think you guys got it right. So let's take a look because square root of na uh, 49. So even though it's in a square root, it's in a third form, but you first need to check if it can be simplified. So square root of 49 is 7. So that's basically 7 or 7 by 1, right? And that's clearly a rational number because it's of the p by q form so this is clearly a rational number okay now if you look at cube root of 8 what is cube root of 8 it's 2 so again 2 by 1 again it's of the p by q form so it's again a rational number right so remember to simplify don't just assume you see a square root or cube root okay that's going to be irrational don't make that assumption but now if you look at pi by 2 Again, don't take pi as 22 by 7. That's only the approximate value. So as we saw in the calculator, it's something like 
one five nine and there's like infinite digits right it just goes on and on so if you divide that by two you'll still get a non-terminating non-recurring number so this is still going to be non-terminating and non-recurring so very important to understand these concepts and non-recurring and so definitely pi by two is basically an irrational number so the only irrational number here from this list is pi by two excellent i see a lot of you have got the correct answer superb that's great so we've talked about a lot of numbers so let's uh, visualize and organize this into this chart and guys you can uh, copy down this chart or you can take a screenshot of this or uh, later copy it down after the live session so let's go from the top here and see right so we talked about real numbers right we started with the concept of real numbers real numbers are the numbers which can be represented on the number line remember we have done this number line here so real numbers are numbers that can be represented on the number line and real numbers can be divided as into rational and irrational numbers so guys can you see real numbers can be divided as rational or irrational numbers so we saw how to plot the integers whole numbers and all and even the fractions and later we are going to take a look at how to plot the irrational numbers also on the number line so that's coming up so let's uh, see here so what were the and rational numbers can be divided into integers and non-integers right and under integers you can have negative integers or whole numbers which can be divided as zero or into natural numbers so let's take some examples so for example here zero is here and if you have numbers like one two three the natural numbers will fall in this category and together they are known as whole numbers okay and then you have negative integers like minus one minus two minus three so this entire set okay not just the negative integers the entire set of negative integers and the whole numbers is together known as integers right so very good and now if you take a look uh, then there are the non-integers so the things which are not integers right like uh, decimals uh, and fractions so as we discussed the decimals can be terminating okay so you can have terminating decimals like a simple example is half right half is going to be 0 0.5 so it's a terminating decimal or you can have non uh, non terminating which means recurring decimals right so something like 1 by 3 because you know it's 0.333 it goes on so 0.3 bar right so can you see that non integers can be divided into terminating and recurring so this means that these are terminating and non terminating or basically recurring so please make this important uh, concept clear right and now if we look up so then uh, if we go back to the uh, num real numbers so these are all of these together so all the integers and non integers are together known as rational numbers right and those numbers which are not uh, rational are irrational and we saw the examples for example you have uh, root 2 uh, square root of 3 square root of 2 uh, you have numbers like pi right cube root of 10 as we saw so these are all irrational numbers and the important thing to remember that the irrational numbers they are basically non-terminating and they are non-recurring okay so i see uh, some of you are writing imaginary numbers so for classes 7 to 10 imaginary numbers are not in the syllabus so what is an imaginary number a number which is not real okay so those numbers which are not real are called imaginary numbers but we are uh, i have not put it in this chart because that's not in your syllabus but note this very key definition because people get confused that integers uh, the non integers can be either terminating that is simple the uh, decimal ends or non terminating right and recurring so it's non terminating uh, and recurring which means the pattern repeats or sometimes we just say recurring or uh, and the irrational numbers are only they can only be non-terminating and they have to be non-recurring so there should be no repeated pattern 
okay so guys with the help of this chart and example just visualize this and you'll find it real easy and i highly recommend you to draw this chart also on paper right then you'll completely absorb this classification because you know uh, so many terms it can get confusing all right excellent so now let's come to this interesting topic that how do you represent irrational numbers on the number line so for example if i have to plot root 2 okay so uh, we looked at this number line here right remember guys so suppose we want to plot the irrational number which is also a real number right so if we have an irrational number like square root of 2 how do i plot it accurately on the number line okay we know that root 2 is 1.41 right uh, 414 right so if you look at the calculator right so square root of 2 is going to be one point four one four two right and so on but this is endless right so how do we accurately plot this guy so that's the interesting question right so let's understand that so i'm going to go down here and let's take a look at this so how do we plot root two so very good some of you are saying pythagoras excellent so yes we need to use pythagoras theorem so let's understand how okay so let's say you take uh, so you consider a triangle like this, right? So how can we represent root 2? So if you take a right angle triangle where these sides are one unit each. Okay. Excellent. A lot of you are saying Pythagoras theorem. So if this, uh, these sides are one and one, if we apply uh, Pythagoras theorem, what is going to be the hypotenuse? So the hypotenuse is going to be square root of one square plus one square, which is basically root 2, right? So root 2 is our hypotenuse okay so using this pythagoras theorem we are going to plot root 2 accurately not roughly okay so we are going to plot root 2 perfectly and accurately on this number line okay so let's take a look so let's say our uh, zero is here i'm just going to draw it a bit to the left and one important thing uh, don't mark one as one centimeter because that distance is going to be uh, really small so you can take one to be larger like one inch or maybe three centimeters so let's say your one is somewhere here okay and then your two would be somewhere here and so on okay so i'm just showing it roughly here but you need to draw it accurately with a scale where this distance is around three centimeters so that it's easy for you to draw the diagram so this is our uh, side here and it's basically representing one unit so it's representing this side now what you do so using construction you draw a perpendicular here so we are going to draw a perpendicular right so let's say this is our perpendicular so i'll draw it now with a solid line and this is 90 degree and let's say this thing till here is one unit okay so this is one unit right and so let me just erase this uh so this basically is one unit so this is our one and this is our one right and now if you join this here so this you need to draw the perpendicular using construction so i'm sure you know that and now if you join this so this length of this hypotenuse as we discussed is going to be root 2 clear so guys we're using pythagoras theorem and representing root 2 here geometrically right so using geometry and now the important trick is you put your compass at point O and uh, where your compass is of this length root 2 and you draw this arc right so you're going to draw this arc and you know it's going to fall close to 1.4 right so it's going to so if we complete this arc here right so let's say we draw the arc something like this right and so this point right here is going to be so this point where uh, where you put the compass at uh, this zero and draw this arc can you guys see that so when you draw this arc this is basically going to be your uh, root 2 and we represented root 2 perfectly and accurately on the number line excellent right so is that clear so we basically use Pythagoras theorem and found root 2 on the number line now the question is how do you plot let's say we want to plot another number let's say root 3 so guys how do we plot root 3 on the number line so can you tell me that so we correctly represented uh, root 2 so how do we plot root 3 
So what do you guys think we need to do here? So yeah, somebody says, uh, ARG math says another triangle, right? So again, we need to apply Pythagoras theorem, right? So in for this one, so what is going to be the sides of the triangle? So for root three, you know, if we again apply the hypotenuse, so root three can be represented as root two square plus one square, right? So one of the sides is going to be root two and the other side is going to be one. So if you do the maths, so this is going to work out to be root three, right? So can you see that? So the hypotenuse is going to be root two square plus one square. Okay. So now we're going to make use of this since we've already found root two here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a perpendicular here of one unit. So you can either do that on the number line or we'll do it here, right? So we are going to make a perpendicular here of length one unit. So this is one and this is perpendicular. It's perpendicular to this root two. And let's complete this triangle now. So guys, can you see that? So what is this triangle going to be? This is root three. Right. Again, applying a Pythagoras theorem, very simple. So it's the square of root two plus one square. And again, you take your compass and put it at O. And now this time you draw this arc. Right. So if you draw this arc here, you know, it's going to land up near 1.7. Right. So the root three will land up somewhere here. And here we've got square root of three. So again, we plotted root three accurately on the number line. So is this point clear, guys? So what is the trick we are using here? We are using Pythagoras theorem because root two, root three, these are non-terminating, non-recurring decimal numbers, right? You can't calculate them accurately. So we are using geometry to plot them on the number line. Okay. And similarly, another good example for you to know is root of five, right? So how would you plot square root of five on the number line? Okay. So how do you do that? So again, we can apply Pythagoras theorem, right? So root five, so what will be the Pythagoras theorem? So for the hypotenuse for root five is going to be square root of, you know, it's two square plus one square, right? So our sides are going to be two and one because two square plus one square is five. So that's a simple way to get the, right? So again, we use another triangle. So the main thing is you need to decide your triangle and write it in this square root form and decide the length of your sides. So now we'll take the sides of length two and one. And so I'm sure you guys can do this yourself, right? So please remember this important trick of how to represent irrational numbers on the number line. Okay. And this is a very important uh, thing. And sometimes you get this question in your tests. All right, guys. And now I have some interesting questions for you to solve as your homework. So here are two questions. So the first question is, is nine by 42 a terminating or a non terminating decimal number, right? So remember one hint is uh, rather than using the calculator or solving, I taught you a shortcut trick so you can use the rule that we learned to decide if this uh, number is terminating or non terminating. So that's my hint, but go ahead and uh, take a look at the fraction carefully and solve this question. And there's another interesting, the second question for you that if the radius of a circle is seven, is the circumference of a of the circle a rational or an irrational numbers? So these are your homework question guys. And I want you to try these yourself and do write your answers in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading your answers and I promise you I'll reply to them as soon as possible for the other live classes. Also, I've seen your answers and I'm replying to them as soon as I can. So go ahead and try these homework questions and do write your answers in the comments below. Okay. And uh, guys, uh, we have some more uh, real number videos on our uh, YouTube channel. So do check out these videos. So this one is uh, particularly useful for class nine and for uh, even for class seven and eight, you know, so this video seven, eight and ninth class can watch this video. And this video is mainly for the class 10, right? So this, uh, so we have this video on the rational numbers, which is mainly for classes, uh, seven, eight or nine, right? Uh, and this, uh, real number video is for class 10. So guys do watch these videos. I'll try to put the links uh, in the description below, or you can just search it on our YouTube, uh, YouTube channel, Manocha Academy. 
So do check these out. And um, if you haven't checked out my website, as I mentioned earlier, do check it out, manochacademy.com. You'll find uh, math, uh, chemistry and physics stuff. And we have these uh, full courses for you for class nine and class 10. So do check it out. And um, thanks a lot for your support. It's uh, uh, great to see your comments uh, in, in our YouTube uh, channel and uh, great to hear your feedback. So thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this session. So guys do hit the like button and do share out this session with your uh, friends so they can also watch this and they can benefit from the classes. And I'll try to take more live classes on uh, physics, chemistry, maths. So guys stay tuned and hit the subscribe button for our uh, Manocha Academy YouTube channel and do click on the notification bell so that you'll get notified about these uh, new live classes and any videos that we upload. So guys, hit the like right now and thanks a lot for your support. And don't forget to try these uh, questions that I gave you. Put your answers in the comments below. So that's an important homework for you. And definitely as homework, watch these videos. I think you'll find them very useful for your revision. Uh, and do check out our website, manochaacademy.com. All right, guys, thanks. Uh, I really enjoyed the session. All of you are very interactive and answering the questions. So it was uh, great fun. Uh, hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks a lot. Okay, take care. Bye.